upcycling vintage linens. Hi, I'm Michelle Paganini, owner of Paganunu and an upcycle guru. I'm here today to talk about vintage linens. They're beautiful. The needlework is sewers we can all appreciate, but we really don't use them anymore the way that they were used by the women who made them. It seems a shame to let them go to waste, so I've thought of some ways that you can repurpose vintage linens. But before we get into the projects, let's talk about some of the pitfalls. Sometimes they can be too fragile to use, so whatever your end purpose is, you wanna double check and make sure it's strong enough, maybe even put it through the washer. And then there are stains. So we can see on this version right down here on the tablecloth, there are some stains on the end, and so there are ways to cover that up. You can see on the little bag that I made, there's some patching right on top of it, and so that's one way to deal with stains. Cut around it and use it for something else, as I've done with the buttons, so you can salvage the part that you used right there just for the buttons. I actually did one with a uh, napkin too, with a little bit of embroidery on there. And then in this example, there were tiny stains and the embroidery was just beautiful. So what I did was I took some buttons and I bought some embroidery thread that's the same and I did a little daisy stitch and on top of the stains I put two buttons with a daisy stitch. So it looks like it's part of the project right now. And then it could be just the shape as well. You can see I've done a scarf right here that has some doilies on it, which is fun for winter. I had that around Christmas time I was wearing it. Here's a doily I bought in a thrift store. It's not really suitable for that project because you can see that the end, edges of it won't lay flat. So I can't sew it on the way I did the other, what, the other two. And then here are some that are perfectly suitable, ironed flat, and they're easy to go on and they would look really terrific. So you're assessing for stains, for anything that needs to be fixed or repaired, and for suitability for your project. So the next thing we're gonna look at is how to take the um, vintage pillowcases, which I think are beautiful, but I use, I use big pillows and they won't fit on my pillows. But I really think that they're wonderful, especially this pattern, which was very popular of ladies. So what can you do? You can make hanger covers beautiful hanger covers, which I think would make a very good gift, a hostess gift if you're staying at someone's house. Be good for a wedding dress or a formal. Here's an example of a lady that's already done. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a matching one. So I'm gonna show you how to do the pattern. And you are going to use a piece of paper, newspaper, anything you want, big enough pen to see it. And you're gonna anchor it by marking right where the opening is, because when you sew it together, you're gonna to want an opening so you can slip the end through. You can see that this one won't lay flat. It's gonna tilt a little bit. That's just fine, I can still make a pattern. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle it down so I can capture the end of it and know exactly where that is, and then do the same thing on the other side. And there's nothing that has to be completely exact about this. So I've got a pattern right now, and then of course what you wanna do is you wanna add in some seam allowance so that you can actually have room to sew it together. And here's one I've completed that has seam allowance. You can decide how long you want it to hang. This one is just a little bit longer than the one I did before, but you can see the fit's pretty good. So if we take it onto our pillowcase, which I've already cut the top off of, and we put it on there, we can pin it on and do a quick cut and then a quick sew. The dimensions of the hanger happen to fit the pillowcase perfectly, which is what I found with the other two that I did as well. Make sure we're straight, not quite. I'm looking at the end right here to make sure that they're about the same. Okay, a quick cut and we will be ready to go. I'm gonna cut on the dotted lines because that's where the seam allowance actually needs to be. I left the dotted lines and cut beyond it so that you can see what would happen with the seam allowance. There's another trick that you're gonna do, going to want to do. You're gonna make sure that it's even on both sides. And since we freehanded it, that might not be the case. So if you take it and you actually fold it on itself, so it's right down the middle, and turn it over on both sides, you can see if it's matching or not. And it is matching on the sides. It's not matching right here. So one's a little bit higher than the other. And I can go in and trim it. 
and then we have two matching sides. I'm going to clip just a little bit of the end because that's where I'm going to leave the opening for the hanger to come through. So we're going to reverse sides. And pin it and sew it up and we will have our hanger cover. You're thinking about the presents that you could give people right now, aren't you? And how hard it is to cut into that first linen. It seems a little bit sacrilegious, but having them go unused or go into the landfills is even worse. So you're really doing a good thing when you repurpose vintage linens. So I'm gonna sew it now. And I'm not gonna finish the end where the hanger comes through because I can just turn that under. So I've marked right where that is with the clip. And stitch along, leaving yourself a seam allowance. When you get to the end, if the thing isn't lined, if you're not using a walking foot, sometimes they end up misaligned. And since it has a crocheted edge, we definitely want it to be aligned. So if you turn the fabric up at the very end and you stitch that way, it helps it not to become out of alignment so that it's actually matching when you get down there. And I'm gonna reverse. And I am done. Needle up. Press your foot up. So you can see at the end that I actually got a really good match on here by doing a turn up. The other thing to do is start sewing from the bottom, but it's actually easier to sew from the top on here. I have a little thread nest that's not gonna show on the other side. Put the presser foot down. I actually need to have it angled a little bit. I love the feel of vintage linens. It's just so soft. And again, I'm going to pinch up the edge, hold it up. You can see it's gonna fit right on the hanger. Of course, we would press the edges so they lay nicely. And with a little hole that I left in the top, I can go ahead and just slide that right through and I can tuck it back down. So when it's tugged down and it's all pressed, it's gonna look just like the other one. There are a couple other things that I wanna show you that make really great travel gifts. When we sew, or when we travel, I'm sorry, when we're packing, I don't like my shoes to touch anything in my suitcase. So one of the things I've done that makes it fun to unpack is to create a bag out of some vintage linens and slip my shoes in. So I can put all different kinds in and I can flip them from one way to the other, which is awesome. So that's a great thing to do. Also, I like to travel with a shawl because the temperatures go up and down. But if I put it in my tote bag, it ends up being um, a little bit damaged sometimes, so I made a roll to put it in. Look at that beautiful needlework. And the bonus is on an airplane. I can put it on and just lay right back. Aganunu, upcycle sewing made simple.